Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post Interview. I am here joined by Mr. George Kikpatze, the Vice Chairman of Bitfury. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Now, Bitfury has been around for seven, eight years. Would you care to give a brief summary of the history that Bitfury has walked till now? Well, the company really started uh, by designing the chips on the hardware side, and it was uh, one of the first ones to design the ASIC chip, the 55 nanometer. Uh, mm -hmm. Then it moved into 28, 16, um, you know, cur currently working on a 14, 10 node with plans on a 7. Mm -hmm. um, started growing company of 20 people today to over 600 uh, mm -hmm. all around the world in 16 countries with offices all the way from Canada to uh, uh, Tokyo uh, and uh, Seoul. And of the 600 people, we have 150 software coders and developers. And the company transitioned itself from hardware to software and recently announcing plans to go into artificial intelligence. Now, would you care to comment on the comparison between uh, Antpool or Bitmain's ASIC tech and Bitfury's ASIC tech? I think um, the uh, Moore's uh, law is slowing down mm -hmm. and the efficiencies that we had over the last three to four years where new technology would leapfrog uh, by 100, 150%, that is largely over. Um, you know, everybody's designing full custom, and uh, here it comes down to innovation. And uh, what Bitfury has been able to do is uh, squeeze out the immersion cooling technology, which we believe right, right. is the platform for artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Currently, the difference between um, Bitfury and our Chinese uh, colleagues is plus or minus 20 percent, which really boils down to the yields uh, of the wafer as well as the cost of the wafer. Mm -hmm. Now, yields and costs, that's the most important aspect when it comes to mining. However, the profitability of mining cryptocurrencies is in a bit of a downturn. Now, Bitfury used to own about 45% of shares in Bitcoin mining. However, mm -hmm. now it's currently the Bitfury pool is owning 2%. Now, I'd like to ask, how's the profitability when it comes to mining business in Bitfury? So Bitfury has mined over a million Bitcoins throughout the history, mm -hmm. and we've always been a company that um, didn't go out and sell the equipment to the consumers, but really focused on doing full service solutions and mm -hmm. providing solutions for institutional clients, high net worth individuals. Today, um, if we look at the um, overall size, um, our chips are mining approximately 13% mm -hmm. of the entire ecosystem. Uh, and uh, if you look at the uh, pool, uh, just recently, you know, our pool is approximately 4%, mm -hmm. and we're going to be getting additional institutional customers to get it up to 10%. Now, is ASIC mining gears or ASIC tech chips, like you mentioned, is still on demand because the mining industry is currently shrinking? Yes, uh, in, uh, we are going through a crypto winter, and in times Indeed. like this, it's very important to have uh, not just uh, you know selling your equipment, but hosting the equipment and looking for uh, low energy solutions. Because at the end of the day, if you have, a, let's say, a, a seven nanometer chip that is yielding 20, 30 percent more than um, you know 10, 14 nanometer chip, but it's located at five cents, and you put your uh, 10 to 14 nanometer chip at four cents, that you will be making a little bit more money. So it's all about deploying at scale in low energy solutions, and Bitfury has over 30 people scouting the world constantly in, term, in search of low energy costs. So again, it's about input and output, right? Absolutely. Now moving on to another topic, which is Lightning Network. Sure. Bitfury has been working very hard to strive or realize the adoption of Lightning Network as well as Bitcoin. However, uh, when it comes to the adoption of Lightning Network, there's a controversy going on, whether this is a viable solution or an alternative would be suggested. Now, would you care to comment on the adopt adoption of Lightning Network or to the alternative suggestions that are proposed, being proposed within the crypto industry? Yeah, I mean, I think the uh, importance of the Bitcoin is the resilience uh, of the ecosystem. Uh, Bitcoin is the only, uh, you know, large-scale immutable ledger mm -hmm. that has never been hacked, and you know it's uh, the most secure ledger out there, uh, on which thousands of coders and programmers are building, and the most prolific cryptographers and mathematicians are working on. Right. If you look at uh, Bitfury software, we have 150, you know, uh, many of them PhDs, winners of international mathematics, chess, physics uh, competition that are building on Bitcoin blockchain. And therefore, um, for a design, 
Bitcoin blockchain is the most secure, but it gives out in terms of the uh, you know, transaction volumes. Mm -hmm. Hence comes innovative solutions such as Rootstock, such as Lightning, right. the second layer solutions that you know, will bring the promise of uh, you know, micropayments to billions. We believe in Lightning. Uh, we are one of the big developers contributing to the Lightning network. The ecosystem of Lightning is growing very robustly, and you know, we believe it is the ultimate second layer peer-to-peer -peer network that will bring the promise of uh, Bitcoin to billions. Before joining Bitfury, in my prior lifetime, I was investor in a mobile telephony, and I've seen that the growth of the GSM networks didn't really happen in US or Canada or United Kingdom. It happened in places like India and in China in, you know, in Africa and Latin America because people mm -hmm. didn't have fixed line telephony mm -hmm. and they leapfrogged completely going out to the mobile telephony. Same right. thing. The Lightning is the voice over IP of the Bitcoin blockchain protocol, and it will bring the opportunity for uh, micropayments to the unbanked. There are three and a half billion people unbanked, mm -hmm. and Lightning is that solution that will uh, versatile in terms of the speed and throughput, but will be using the security of Bitcoin blockchain in terms of the settlement layer. Now, what do you believe is the homework left for Bitfury to do to achieve mass adoption of the adoption of Bitcoin, like you mentioned, uh, service providing service to the unbanked, maybe. Yeah, I mean, Bitfury is one of the contributors. Besides Bitfury, uh, you know, there are thousands and thousands of startups, and there are, you know, hundreds of thousands, an army of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin users that are um, out there and, um, you know, uh, evangelizing about Bitcoin, using the Bitcoin, and you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, there was a very famous uh, uh, you know, saying that uh, if in the history of mankind, uh, if there was any progress or change made, it was always made by a small group of committed individuals. So never right. underestimate it. And you know, that's a story of Bitcoin. And you know, there are day and night, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of people working, coding, and developing. And when you have such a great deal of IQ mm -hmm. and brain power dedicated of uh, you know, solving issues and bringing applications, magic always happens. Now, switching gears to a bit of a more recent topic. Now, Bitfury just announced to launch Bitfury Surround, which is a project aiming to disrupt the copyrights industry or the music industry. Yeah. Would you care to explain a little bit about that? Sure. So about two years ago, we did a pilot project with Ernst & Young on digital rights management. Right, right. And, um, you know, in, in addition, we rolled out our private blockchain platform called Exonum. The uh, difference with Exonum is that it anchors on a Bitcoin blockchain for the security, and we've done numerous projects in a land title, uh, project in the Republic of Georgia on the state auction systems in Ukraine, and building out to many other governments. Um, and we realized that in order to go and disrupt the music industry, we really needed to have music in industry insiders. So right. we got approached by the very seasoned ex-universal um, you know, sort of executives that mm -hmm. have taking out the technology with our coders and developers, and we're launching Bitfury um, uh, Surround, which is an open source platform for, in essence, digital rights management. Right. And uh, expect uh, announcements in the next uh, couple of months, uh, both from you know, global artists, glo glo you know, global music uh, uh, you know, entities, and uh, we certainly have high hopes that, uh, uh, given the prominence of uh, K-pop groups here in Korea, that mm -hmm. you know, we will be expanding it here as well. Now, there are a lot trying to revolutionize the music industry using blockchain technology. Yeah. Then what makes Bitfury Surround different? Is it the network that you guys have? A couple of things. First is um, it's very important that the, uh, the leaders that are in charge of Bitfury Surround, they're music industry insiders. You know, right. They've worked at Vivendi, at Universal. They have all the relationships. Therefore, they understand inside out what are the... Uh, you know, issues of the music industry, why the artists are disappointed, you know, why the content creation is at all time low, mm -hmm. uh, and the incentive systems that need to be adjusted to actually give power back to the artist in order to go and create, right. and give power and satisfaction back to the consumers, knowing that when I reward the artist, uh, you know, full 100% of that reward goes to an artist and not just 3% or 2% and not in nine months, that's one. Mm -hmm. Second, you know, at, at, in a nutshell, um, you know, the power of the uh, you know, surround platform and, and the blockchain platform is a security and immutability of the digital rights comes off Bitcoin blockchain, the mm -hmm. only immutable blockchain that is out there. When I start putting digital rights 
pegging and uh, onto anchoring onto Bitcoin blockchain, I know that my digital content or my uh, you know, uh, content creation will not be jeopardized. It will mm -hmm. always be imprinted on and no hacker or no uh, you know, third party uh, you know, unethical intermediary may take it out. And once the trust is established and this trust is um, out there, I think uh, you know, then uh, it's, it's gonna be a snowball uh, effect of uh, building and attracting more artists. Now, switching gears to why we are here today, we are here because you are signing an MOU with the Commons Foundation mm -hmm. on a project named Golden Goose. Yes. Now, this is a mining initiative to build a center in Paraguay uh, using electricity produced by the dam located in Paraguay. Yes. Now, what will be the specific services that Bitfury would provide to the project of Golden Goose? Yeah, once again, we uh, never been a B2C seller. Uh, we always right. look at B2B and uh, looking out at partners that are taking a similar long-term view that we are. What we like uh, in Commons Foundation is their long-term approach. We see there is a great opportunity to go in a place like Paraguay that has excess electricity uh, to deploy our hardware solution at a low energy cost. Uh, in addition to that, to create jobs in blockchain software developers to create a blockchain university, blockchain mm -hmm. courses, because all of the countries that have lots of natural resources, they're looking where to employ their youth. You know, they don't necessarily want their youth to go into coal mines or into steel mills. They want them to be coding, developing, and creating the value in the you know, knowledge economy. Right. So we're taking a very holistic approach. We're looking at a long-term approach, and the vision of um, you know, giving uh, Bitcoin being a liberator and equalizer in terms of society is very much in sync with what the founders of Commons have. And uh, once you connect, you establish a trust, you know, the rest is history. So what we are ready to do is deploy a full term solution mm -hmm. uh, in terms of Bitfury's, um, uh, you know, ASIC mining chips for the cryptocurrency. And we're also going to be looking to deploy our emerging cooling solution for the artificial intelligence, which, you know, will be great benefit to the Paraguayan people. Now, Earlier on the interview, you mentioned about inputs and outputs. Now, how's the input-output status or the yield status uh, when it comes to the government or the land of Paraguay compared to other competition such as China or South American countries yes. around the world? Yeah, uh, you know, we've had many looks into China. The issue with China is that, uh, you know, the government of China is, uh, you know, taking their particular approach to Bitcoin. Uh, in, a, in essence, the uh, same approach they're taking to Internet. They want to... Uh, take a measured approach and, uh, you know, take, uh, take a time in studying it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you've seen a major deal of clampdown on uh, miners in China and, right. uh, you know, there's a, there's a major exodus out of that. Um, we as a company um, have been offered on numerous occasions to go and deploy our equipment in places like China or Venezuela or, uh, you know, even Iran. But uh, we stay away from these locations because at the end of the day, you want to have a certainty and stability and you yes. want to make sure that you know, your assets don't get seized or get, don't get nationalized. Therefore, mm -hmm. Paraguay fits the bill um, you know, with our partners in, in terms of a deployment. Mm -hmm. And certainly, uh, you know, it's, it's a location where uh, you know, it answers, kind of checks the box in that regard and it does have the low energy cost which we can utilize. Now, 2019 is said to be the year of adoption. Now, with the crypto winter, you know, with the mm. crypto spring, I'd say, coming mm. in, a lot of com blockchain community or crypto mm. traders are hoping for real adoption of cryptocurrency or cryptocurrency technology, blockchain technology for that matter. Yes. Now, Bitfury is one of the major players in the field. Mm. So to you, what would be your prediction for 2019? Are we going to see spring coming along in the coming future or a few months? Listen, it's nature of the law. After <laughs> winter comes the spring and Indeed, after yes, hot yes. summer, you know, uh, we had a big hot summer, by the way. Uh, last year, you know, comes uh, <laughs> a quick uh, fall and then winter, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it's only nat nature and the cryptocurrency, the revolution has been going on for 10 years. It's for those that believe long term. Those that are complaining about a quick correction and the winter are those that haven't seen the cycles before. Right. And they're in and for the quick uh, sort of a speculative gains. Uh, those are wrong reasons to be in. Those that are coming into crypto understanding that it's all about uh, eliminating corruption. It's all about uh, enhancing individual freedom. It's all about uh, making the world a better place. Mm -hmm. Are those the ones that will reap the benefits? So in a crypto winter, uh, people may call crypto winter from the purpose of the prize, but actually inside Bitfury, there's a massive amount of coding and development that's going on. 
a lot of our colleagues, you know, there's a massive amount of innovation and application uh, development going on. If you were to ask what would be that sort of a aha moment for, for the um, ecosystem, I'd still bet that uh, it would be lightning. Mm -hmm. And the reason is simple. Bitcoin is not a uh, cryptocurrency invention for people in Manhattan or Mayfair. Mm -hmm. You know, these people have payments network. You know, they, when, I, when I go to America or when I go to, you know, uh, UK, the uh, payments work and, uh, you know, there's no uh, issues. But if you go to 90% of the world, there are issues with the payments. There are right. issues with inflation. There's issues with currencies being devalued. Uh, and really that's what the uh, region that Bitcoin is for. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, sort of a, a seamless uh, micropayment network that can address that is lightning. You know, you will have smartphones uh, going down in prices to, you know, $20, $25. Right. Um, you know, you'll have global Wi-Fi in the next three to uh, five years. So you will see, uh, you know, the other three to three and a half billion unbanked all of a sudden with global connection, with a smartphone, and they're not going to go to HSBC or a Citibank. They mm -hmm. don't know what, what HSBC or <laughs> Citibank is. I still so don't they, know. So. <laughs> so exactly. And, you know, therefore, the first thing they'll have, they'll have a digital wallet. And once they have digital wallet, they'll have digital currency, which, you know, from network effect, it will be Bitcoin. And then the micropayments lightning. You know, you have the revolution in communication that has already happened last year, just one messaging application, WhatsApp, sent more messages than entire global telecom uh, right. industry combined. Mm -hmm. In the same way, the internet is greatly under monetized. Mm -hmm. And when so many people are connected, you want people to trade. Right now, the trade that's happening is minuscule. And a digital currency such as Bitcoin will unlock the global trade and will empower people, particularly in emerging markets, and we believe the lightning will be the solution that will truly drive the Bitcoin adoption to, you know, to, to the billions. Well, that is all the questions we have today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. George Kitbatse, the Vice Chairman of Bitfury. Thank you for watching.